Well, I'm very sorry for the late post here on Sunday afternoon. But we've got to go through the three Saturday games. And it started off beautifully, didn't it, with a 79 from Damien Cook. I was just driving back from Sydney, so had a yeah very busy day today, which was good fun anyway. But uh, yeah, Cook it was a very, very fun one. Having Cook, Galvin, and then trading in Colin Matungi as well for the three top scorers in this game. I did have six players in this one, so there were some positives for sure. And a couple of sort of you know, average ones you can't win them all that's for sure but Damien Cook with the goal kicking he actually kicked them really really well so seven goals for him a couple of try assists ended up playing yeah you know, the second part of this game out in the centers or even you know longer than that 60 odd minutes or close to yeah 60 minutes yeah 60 minutes because Mamazelis came on the 20th there you go uh, so that was a he was scoring so well he's better than a point a minute but he ended up doing incredibly well anyway out there in the centers and with 42 points on the board he was able to get some good goal kicks in there and and good run meters and uh, and some tackle breaks there as well. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was definitely a fun game. That's for sure with all the points out there. Galvin with a 70, a try, a try assist for him. Five offloads to hand, 187 run meters, 20 tackles as well. What a beast, what a man. 52 average in your rookie season as an 18, 19 year old now. Uh, to go along with De Silva as well, had an absolute beauty of a game. Both of those guys did. And Talon with 69 minutes and a 58 score with a, a cracking try or pretty easy try in the end, but a good bit of a analysis and an awareness from him to get over untouched and then make a line break for that Galvin try as well. 42 tackles for five misses. I was having a laugh with a few of the guys because, you know, when he came on the scene, when Nappy was going to be out for, you know, a couple, potentially a bunch of weeks there, wasn't to be, but, uh, but to Silva, I was interested in buying him then. Didn't really didn't work out. Um, and I'm glad I, yeah, got away from that idea, but um, yeah, it would have been fun to have him for this 58, that's for sure. But there's also just, I actually wouldn't have had any idea about it to be fair. Actually, I might have given how it'll eventually come on my feed, given how many comments there's been. But a lot of people reached out to me and said, oh, don't listen to the guys and they're having a laugh at what's going on on a Facebook post on General Fantasy Talk there. And um, an anonymous post, of course. Mustn't have been happy with that. Uh, with selecting Watson or something like that. I'm in the same boat as you guys. I'm in the same boat. I copped the Watson one as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of people going into bat and all this kind of stuff. Just try not to let these guys, I don't know, get to us all, to be fair. Like, I'm happy to jump in, defend myself, or you guys jumping in, defending yourselves as well. But there's actually a guy that's that's commenting, and he might be the guy that's the anonymous post up. I don't actually know. Uh, but there's been you know, a couple of guys, but one guy in particular I had to kick out. He was in the, you know, paid for the private group. He's in there and kicked him out he yeah was pretty crap overall uh and then had some really bad racist comments so he got kicked out and he's one of the guys that's that's commenting on the on the facebook post there and uh yeah so there's usually a little bit of a, an agenda or some type of reason for for some people commenting and, and doing these things trust try to leave it it's not worth it because now that post because it's got like 100 comments or something about me which is nice thanks guys um and a few people having a laugh and stuff like that Try not to let it, um, the more you comment on it, the more it feeds them. And obviously it comes to the top of your, your algorithm as well. And, you know, if, if there's a comment, a, a post on that page, it's getting all these comments, it's going to go straight to the top of the feed. So just be aware of that as well. But uh, I do thank you all for going into bat for those that did. And, uh, yeah, just, just be aware that these are the type of people, some of them anyway, that, uh, that you, you're replying with and commenting with, uh, are people of that who are racist and I have screenshots and everything of these things so yeah just something to think of there for sure getting back to the scores there Sione Fido with a 55 in 29 minutes wow the ppm on that one almost almost 2x on that one I am doing this video at halftime of the Cowboys and the Dogs game as well so yeah see how that one plays out and I will probably still be talking by the time that starts and I'll catch up very very soon but Johnny Bateman, 53 for him. A good game in one that was obviously very, very high scoring. He was still able to make 42 tackles. And at his price point of 587, I wish I picked him as well over Watson and every single other person that played yesterday, basically. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you win some and you lose some. That is for sure. With the luck box, Jack White in 53. Very happy with his output in the end. It was looking pretty dire in the first portion of this game. I think he was like 15 at halftime. Thankfully, turned things on and got a got a, a nice try assist to Jai Gray, who I'm holding as well. And uh, yeah, just no no negatives and, and good run meters as always there for Jackie Boy and at his price point doing good things with his low break even. 
Fanua Pole with a 53. He's working really hard for this side and doing good things. Marmazelis with a 52. A nice try burrowing over himself. Great to see Alex Twile back out there with a 51. Just straight back on the horse, wasn't he? With a try saver in there. Talis Duncan playing on the edge and playing a full 80 minutes for his 51 points. Starts with the... Uh, the headgear and he loses it fairly quick, which is actually helpful to to determine where Jai Gray is because they both wear the same headgear out there. Tane Milne, what about the couple of try assists that he was getting and offloads? And it was actually a little bit frustrating because, you know, Whiten wasn't getting any of these or, you know, it was him putting on these try assists for, for Johnston and uh, he had that kick back on the inside for Cody Walker. And I had four souths and I was really hoping that they were able to get involved and it was uh, Tane Milne doing all the, all the good stuff there. And... Along with Cheekham, 44 for him in the 76 minutes. He picked up a couple of offloads. He was doing great things early. He was close. I think it was 27 or so at halftime. And it really took him right until the back end of this game to really pick it up in the in the back of you know, that second half, as I said, which was, um, yeah, really ideal score for him and Tane Milne. Like, it's crazy how good Milne's been the last month. So along with Cheekham, they'll continue to be good scorers, it looks like, at the moment. Milne's, he's got some, he's got some flair about him, doesn't he? Cody Walker with two tries, a 42, a little bit disappointing uh, with a couple of forced dropouts as well in this type of, uh, you know, this type of match. But obviously the tries uh, came without any line breaks. He had no, you know, he had one, one tackle break, no offloads, that type of game. Stefano, a 41 for him, so better, but just the amount of points in these types of games. He has such a, a good run on him. He's so strong. It's crazy. He bumps people off so, so easily and he should be dominating these games and he's just not. And I yeah understood people selling him this week and 41 didn't uh, didn't you know prove that that he's bounced back like you know he could easily bounce back or anything like that. Johnson with 36 in this one with a double, two line breaks, getting closer to that record. Samuela Fainu there with a 36, so five missed tackles for him, one error, one penalty, so negatives side of things not very good. One offload, one tackle break, obviously no big attacking stats for him. With these score lines, it's going to be very, very tough unless he's scoring tries or setting them up for him to score well. And I do understand him as a an upgrade target or a downgrade target to you know, whoever you need to in that cheaper range. Adam Dewey, 35. Fatape, 34. Caesar, 33. Apparently, he's going to miss a couple of games as well. Dream Bullard, Davi Moale. That's a tough one for Davi. who's uh, obviously on for a big game, but only played the 25 minutes. The Jai Gray one, I was very happy with the bailout try. But unfortunately, he, uh, he could only pick up a 29 with 132 run meters. And it almost looked like he was going to be down with another hip drop tackle, which is the one Caesar is going to go for. He got the Isaac Tonga one when he got suspended a while back. And then, yeah, this one last night uh, with, with Aiden Caesar as well was pretty tough. Burgess Kepi, Jacob Gagai, unfortunately for him, just the, the one line break, no tries for him in this one. Clemmer playing 24 minutes. He's going to be so cheap next year. I wonder if he uh, becomes... Any type of, you know, has any type of relevance. And then Latufino with a four in 34 minutes. So, yeah, it was obviously Cook going out to center when Richie Kenner went down with the head knock, which is pretty tough there on him. Moving along to the Knights and the Broncos, we had Dean Mariner pick up a double in the end, three line breaks, 11 tackle breaks there, eight missed tackles. It's imp uh, very impressive. Obviously, he was um, getting involved a lot. He made 11 and missed eight in there, so... Good stuff for him, working working hard and then picking up the spoils on the other end. And what about Corey Jensen in the end? Picking up a 63-point, 73-minute effort for, for Corey. Obviously, with guys like Carrigan getting a bit of a rest and uh, Wilson didn't actually play big minutes either, that, that Jensen was able to work really hard through the center there. Just had the four negatives and and did great work there, scoring the second-best score of the game. Reese Walsh with a welcome back to him. To good scores with a try, two try assists, four line break assists, and two line breaks. It's just rough that he can have that type of score line and he doesn't score like Teddy does. When Teddy has something like this, it's 75 plus and it's it's crazy how that one ends up. But it's the the errors that he possesses, like he always ends up, you know, Teddy can have those games where he has zero and negatives or two or you know, just one error or something like that. And it's closer to a 70, just this type of game with these, you know, run meters and tackle breaks. He never gets the sort of the 250s and 10, 11 tackle breaks. It's just very rare to see that for Walshie, but still a, a cracking player, obviously. And as a man, a good score for him with a 58. He had plenty of attack in there as well. Payne Haas, a nice upgrade. He was a 48. And I was like, oh, I got out of that one pretty well. Picking Watson. Oh, rough. But 53 for Payne Haas in 59 minutes. Run meters pretty well down. 
which was surprising in a game where they ended up winning and you know did really well 30 to 14 they were a little bit low at 118 but uh yeah you can forgive a lot of this stuff post origin for Callum Ponga a 50 for him in 80 minutes with a try saver decent across the board did some good things but uh couldn't help them get the win so you'll take 50 in a pretty average loss they weren't looking too great for this entire game you had Jordan Ricky with a 49 in 69 minutes he let through uh, a pretty bad um pretty bad defensive effort on one of them but only missed two tackles overall sold it enough um yeah again low run meters greg marzu that try at the end kind of hurt me a little bit i didn't play him in super coach in the end opting for isaac tongo and scored a little bit less nothing crazy thank goodness but um yeah greg ended up, ended up getting that try i didn't play him in fantasy either i ended up leaving him out and i, I did play jai gray over greg i also didn't play willison which you know, helped out obviously i didn't play weeks as well that were the three uh the three big ones that i left out Dylan Lucas, 48, it's great to see Greg out there and actually playing after that really bad cork and, and scoring well and getting back to some of his uh, his best efforts. He's got the bye this week and then it is Panthers and it gets a little bit easier after that. So I think he's just a hold now. I was just really glad that he could actually come out and score well and and uh, yeah pause the, just not be injured really, and then pause the, uh, the, the price losses. Dylan Lucas, things change quick, don't they? He obviously starts in the lock position. He actually wasn't scoring too well. And then and I'm getting 48, pushing out to the to the centers. And and uh, you can see there, that's why the, the tackle numbers were a little bit down for him. But a good 48 coming off, you know, was meant to be on the bench, end up starting lock and going from there. Matt Croker, who wasn't in the 17, end up getting that, uh, getting 62 minutes off the off the bench there and scoring a try. So good stuff for him. Daniel Saifidi continues to do great things. And he was another one of the potential buyers that you could have gone for this week. And I just wonder what happened at the start of the season. He was just completely off and he finally uh, is getting back to the scores that he was showing last year and why he got to 525k. So good stuff for owners. Waltz is 46. Hetherington 46 in 37. Good stuff. Pikura went off after 59, but was scoring really well with a 45 there. Physio is a little bit worried about him. Unsure exactly what's uh, happening at this point. But uh, for him, crazy that he picks up a 45 in this one. A nice try, obviously a good line run there. Dan Gagai, post-origin, yeah, post origin. just a pretty tough game for him. Four missed tackles, three errors, and two penalties. Hopefully, it'll be better from there, and you you really uh, doubt that it won't be. He's very, very consistent, and this was a tough one for him. Frizzell with eight missed tackles as well. It's pretty rough on his front. Two try savers, one turnover tackle for him. You had Leo Thompson with a 38 in 46 minutes. You had Kaipis Paul, 37, just continues to, to really struggle in recent history. And only 24 tackles made. He had the uh, yeah, one turnover tackle in there as well with 93 meters. Just He got close to, to scoring a try on one of them and then offloaded it, ended up going forward, which is pretty rough. But that could have been a, a big turnaround with the yeah, the offload there into a try assist as well, or if they uh, they weren't able to chop him down. But the big thing here is the fact that, that Adam Reynolds has returned and he's back. And uh, obviously, yeah, didn't have to do too much in this game get the team around the park, do good things. And they got that win. He's such an integral part to this side. And you've got Arthur's in there with a 35, Stags with a 34. So good to see Arthur's uh, after the big slide that he's had, score a, uh, a much better one with two line breaks. Yet Hastings, a lower one for him. So we've got to note that he's pretty much 54 every week, not in this one. Jacob Saifedi, a lower minute game for him. Cross them with 54 minutes, 29 points for him. Nothing special. You had Gamble who had a HIA, came back on. So he's all good. But um, yeah, nothing special for him. One try assist in this one. Oates Carrigan was the rough one here. 23 in 54 minutes. So there will be, yeah, there is a bunch of people that still own Pat and would have been really happy with him backing up. But obviously it wasn't in a good way there. 18 tackles for four misses, one error. Uh, did end up with a turnover tackle and still only 23 is really tough. And the guy I'm a little bit worried about, obviously coming into next week is that of Willis Willison. I think his time in my team will be done unless we do see injuries to, or, you know, any of Jensen or or Haas or Carrigan not play next week or you know something happens like that, then Willison probably needs to exit my side as well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be tough to get Cleary now after today. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Brayley with 15. Bradman Best is six in nine minutes. Poor fella, just keeps getting hamstring injuries. And just another one of those you know moments where you're backing up from origin and, and unfortunately a hamstring injury. But in saying that, he has the history of hamstring injuries in general, but this year, especially sort of three or four that he's had now, it's very hard to play multiple games in, in a week. If you're in that scenario as well, where you have 
and you are susceptible to to injuries, unfortunately, of the hamstring. All right, we go to the Storm Roosters game, and there was uh, a couple of positives for me, but mainly negatives in this one. Uh, when I say a couple of positives, I mean one positive, and that's Sean Bloor. Where did he pluck this one out of? Three line breaks, a try assist, a try saver as well. Good tackle numbers, 29 for one, especially given they had the ball a lot. And he had 174 run meters, and obviously a lot of that comes through the, the line breaks, but they gave him the ball so much more than they usually have, and he had so many more runs. So that was a great score. Very, very happy in a very bleak week for myself. I think at halftime of the game you, you're watching right now, I think Drinkwater's on like 13, uh, which is pretty rough. And we had Fafita with, well, they're missing an offload, but I think he's going to get like 52 as captain, which isn't too great as well. But we'll get into that a little bit later there. But Bloria was cracking. Crichton with a 62, had an awesome game as well. Six offloads to hand. Still plenty of negatives with the six missed tackles, but to play 80 minutes again, he's a freak, man. He's so fit. He does. He's shredded to, shredded to no end and so strong. So, yeah, doing great things. A massive shout-out to Anderson as well. 59 for him in this game. He played incredibly well with two tries, two line breaks, uh, offloads as well, turnover tackles, try savers. That was an incredible try saver. And him and Jack Howarth playing incredibly well in uh yeah in the time that they in the opportunities they've been given and they've really credit given at this uh this edge or both of them anyway a little bit of starch which is exactly what they needed and, and him for 59 jack howarth for 54 he's someone that i definitely have some interest in as a, a bit of a cash down i think he's earned this spot for the rest of the year now he's doing great things and yeah the try obviously for him 14 tackles two misses yes one error but 210 run meters so gives them another look out there in the centers so keep an eye out on him obviously edge there he'll uh he potential to get the center jewel but we'll see how that one plays out dom young with a 53 with a try for him 10 tackle breaks and those he's so big and strong isn't he which is crazy so what on owners of him you had radley with a 49 there with that try assist there six missed tackles for him uh, but two turnover tackles kind of nullified that one and a sin bin for radley still 49 points in this one Terrell May with a 48 in 46. He just continues to do great things. Two offloads in this one, three tackle breaks. So that was uh, pretty solid, as I said, in that time frame. You'd be happy happy enough as a holder for sure. Collins got 44 minutes. So yeah, you can see a little bit of a split between those guys. Graham with a 45 with a try saver turnover tackle. So still five missed tackles. And uh, I think they'll say they reckon he might, yeah, might be one of his better games of the season there. And yeah, he's had a tough year. So it makes sense. Uh, thank goodness for Hughes that he picked up a, a turnover tackle try saver as well because it wasn't, uh, wasn't his game stats wise and very similar to last game there he's gone 46 and 45 and after having such an incredible run uh, it's tough to see as an owner of him at 788 uh, especially when Cleary went nuts and we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow uh, well actually in the the five things I learned video which will come out a bit later after this uh, after this Cowboys game I get back and watch that but he had uh, Tyrant Wishart with a 44 He's, uh, he's just been great, guys. He's had a, got an error in this one, but 19 tackles for no misses for, for a six is incredible. Great run meters at 157, only kicked for 19 and had the one turnover tackle. So a 44 from him. He's getting closer and closer to a sell once Munster comes back, but until then, doing great things. He had Walker with the 43 in this one. Not too bad, to be fair, without any, yeah, just the one one line break there. No, no try assists, no goals as well. So that was pretty tough. Meany with a 41, pretty solid score to be fair with uh, just the one line break and four goals. Trent Liero made a, a great line break there as well. And we're at the fall from grace at the moment from Eli Katoa. So the last few weeks has been a yeah a little bit tough for, well, he's kind of been on and off for a little bit now and he's getting cheaper and cheaper and it definitely is an option going forward. If he gets to, he's going to get to 650, 640, 630 and super cheap, eh? Similar to that, you know, what happened this last couple of weeks with Adam Fanua Blake and then he's gone on a bit of a tear the last two. So keep Katoa in your thoughts. Brandon Smith with 31 in 60 minutes there. Daniel Tupo with 31. This is so sad. We haven't even got to Watson yet. Nat Butcher, 30 and 36. Spencer Lanyu, 30 in 41. And then Connor Watson, 29 in 70. So the poor fella, he was on 20 odd in like 30 minutes. Things were going fine. He was like 26 or something at halftime. And you're like, yeah, it's, we can handle that. But he had two stints out of center where he picked up a couple of misses. He then got sin binned late in the game. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a night for him. It wasn't a night for the Roosters at all. Very, very tough there. And we've yeah, I've got Watson and Tedesco here and both both very, very poor games for them. So very much, <laughs> I very much hope so that there is a good bounce back next week because that 29 is, is very, very painful. I, I end up going all in on, on Watson in fantasy 
and Supercoach, so that really hurts for sure. Um, so condolences to myself for that one. He will bounce back, but um, yeah, especially when Curran's, I think, you know, got to try and 36 at half time. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Uh, and Tedesco, 28 in his 80 minutes. So yeah, not a game for him either. Three missed tackles, no errors and the like, but um, yeah, only four tackle breaks, 207 run meters, just a nothing game for Teddy there, unfortunately. And it will get easier with some of the opponents, but a, a cracking game for Storm and well well done on their end. You had Papenau doing great things as well, but only 28 for him. So it's a tough game for outside backs, unless you were, uh, you know, Grant Anderson and also uh, Jack Howarth, really. Like it was it was back rowers and uh, and some middles and then Dom Young for the for the Roosters side got a, you know, a couple of good runs and a and a good try there. So yeah, pretty rough there. Still to Tilly Tupano with 14. We had Suali'i with 16. Uh, Warbrick with 25. So yeah, pretty low across the board. And Afahu White coming in and playing. And I think Joe Chan's going to get a suspension as well. And and what about Sua Falongo there coming on for, I think, three and a half minutes and getting a, uh, yeah, sticking his leg out and, and picking up a try there with his signature. Uh, Reese Walsh, anyway. We'll, we'll give him the, the Reese Walsh signature dive. Um, hilarious that time he, he winded himself in that one there. So there you go. Where are we at? Oh, Cowboys 14 12. I hope that uh, that means we've got a, a drinky. A drinky setup. Should I look? Nah, I'll, I'll watch it back uh, and check out check out how that one rolls out. But uh, there you go, guys. That's the the three games from Saturday. I'll obviously get in for get into the three games from today, tomorrow morning. But yeah, the five things I learned, we'll get into that and then we'll get into, yeah, I'm just going to go watch that game, finish that off, go the cows, hopefully hopefully they do win, even though I did tip the the dogs. So, um, if they beat the dogs here, that means they've you know, played really well and, and I like when they uh, I like when they have a crack and, uh, and get into the grind in these types of games, which I have done in a couple, but not many this year. So, wish you all the best of luck, guys, with your final scores. I think in the end, if, if Drinky actually pulls his finger out a bit, I, I might actually kind of hold rank, which would be pretty solid here. Uh, maybe if if all things go well, if Cotter does well and Karaz, I'll actually make a few ranks, which is wild with the, the week that I've had. And thank you to Sean Bloor for that one. But see you later, guys. I'll, I'll catch you in a couple of hours.